Hello friends and Somerville residents, Erica Jones here from Somerville Media Center and we are here in the studio for another episode of Community Lens and I am in the studio with some wonderful friends and neighbors from the Somerville Kiwanis Club. We are joined with the wonderful Jack Connolly and Haley Adams who are going to speak more about this organization and a little bit of your history, what is the Kiwanis Club, how can people learn more about the programs and the events that you do year round, um, as well as your um, your drive that's happening, the fundraiser for the school drive, and we'll get people more informed about what you all do. So, thank you for coming. Oh, Erica, <laughs> it, it's really <clears throat> it's really a joy, and you know a lot of people. Ask, hey, what's this Qantas? Uh, what's in? It's a. Uh, what is the Qantas Club? I'll officially all right. ask the question. The Qantas <laughs> Club is a service organization. And I tell people, you've probably heard of the Rotary Internet. Yeah, well, Kiwanis International is basically the same thing. We're a service organization that goes back to the early 1900s, founded in Detroit, and then has morphed all over the United States, Canada, uh, with local chapters. And, and Kiwanis is originally an Indian name that uh, literally means we build. And that was the club's motto for many, many years. But in the early 2000s, it was changed to serving the children of the world, which is essentially our mission and what this particular program we're going to be talking a little bit about today. international organization. One is international. We've had people come from around the world to our local meetings. We wow. generally meet once a week on Thursdays, 1215 at the Mount Vernon, where we have club <laughs> members. A little plug there. Yeah. Well, we do a great job uh, bringing people together, but really it's a fun afternoon and we keep the mood light, but we do an awful lot of work with not just great projects like Haley's here that started last year, but we do a Thanksgiving event for seniors. We do Reading is Fundamental, where club members go to various um, elementary schools and read to children. We do a Bike Safety Day. Um, it, it, we do a Historic Perspectives, where we bring in actors who perform um, mm. bits of history. So we've got a pretty versatile group of people who help literally serve the community, essentially with the focus on children, as this program is. Right. and so. This is obviously spearheaded by the Somerville Kiwanis Club in partnership with um, a handful of different places locally, um, specifically the Parent Information Center and different Somerville-based schools. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about those um, involved in the collaboration? Sure. So, um, so we started this last year, as Jack had said, and um, with in partnership with the Parent Information Center because uh, most Somerville kids who go to Somerville Public School go through the Parent Information right. Center for registration, so they're very aware of the need. Um, our goal was, and what they told us, was that it wasn't the younger kids who needed the backpacks. It was really seventh grade through twelfth grade because the younger kids are serviced very well by Cradles to Crayons which is a wonderful organization, mm -hmm. but it kind of did not cover the older kids. Mm -hmm. So we decided to focus our drive on grades seven through 12, um, bigger backpacks with, you know, with no crayons and glue and that type right. of thing, but just collecting more high school type supplies for kids. Um, we, we were able to, last year we collected about 200 backpacks, where 120 went to the Somerville Public Schools and the remainder went to Prospect Hill Academy, which is also a local Somerville mm -hmm. school. And uh, they have many, many families in need there as well. So wow. it was really a, a, a big success last year. And so the goal is your, your, your goal is 200 backpacks. I think, you know, that's a, good goal. I, that's a feel good number for me. I feel me. good about that. Um, I think that this year we could um, pretty far surpassed that number because um, through wonderful uh, support from Federal Realty, um, they have actually donated quite a few backpacks already for this, this drive this year. So, you know, I think that this drive will end up uh, producing much more than 200, we hope. That's great. That's great. I feel, I feel good about it. It's a great start. Yeah. It's Absolutely. A good, yeah. You, having that's that support. The, and that's the most expensive piece of getting these backpacks together. Right. So that really you was a huge. You have all the huge... materials, but then to have something to put the materials in is a whole right. other component to it. Right, right. It has to last all year. So, you know, the kids need a good, sturdy backpack, and it was a really wonderful, generous um, donation to this drive. Yeah, well, so. some great collaborations and community partners yep. um, to yeah, obviously absolutely. support your hard work that's going into this. Um, with people who are looking to, like, can they come in, like, if people at their homes that they have leftover materials, can they donate like 
new used materials or, or must they, like is there certain like standards or, or you know what I mean like criteria that people have to follow? Yeah, last year, well Jack and I actually uh, collected some supplies that we had leftover I'm thinking supplies. Thinking about our, yeah. our, our yeah. cabinet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, if you got stuff that's yeah. workable, it's clean and yeah, it might be a year or two old, but you know what? If it hasn't been used, we had a, um, a Catholic school of St. Clements donated quite a bit of their materials, and as a result, uh, it, it, it's all workable stuff. It, it's just wanted to be clean and, uh, uh, and usable. Basically, that's it, and it's a perfect opportunity for people to help out. They can come and drop off in these many drop-off boxes we have, including right here at the Central Media Center, but around the community. Uh, we'll be doing it during the course of July, and it's a, it's a great opportunity for people to share resources that many of them have in their in their homes or in their offices. Mm -hmm. Right. And just one caveat to that is that we did get a lot of supplies last year, you know, where I th feel like somebody just took their drawer and dumped it into the <laughs> box. So, you know, we don't need dried out pens or right. broken pencils. I mean, right. they, they have to be... In working condition. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. preferably right. still in the package, right. you know, that you're just never going to use. Um, sure. But... That's but, a good point of clarification, just because yeah, I yeah. know that people are always willing to help. <laughs> so, it's just sometimes yeah. it's important to have some good guidelines. Right. So right, right. In terms of the framework, this is from which day to which day? So the drive officially starts on July 1st. Um, I know Jack, he can talk about the letters he has sent out to the community, but the kickoff is July 1st. We're going to have these boxes here, mm -hmm. uh, school supply drive boxes in most of the local banks in Somerville. Okay. So Navio Credit Union, Winter Hill Bank, uh, their two branch locations. Jack's office will have one. My office will have one. East Cambridge Savings Bank will have one. Um, so you can look for the boxes there. Um, there's also, you know, the, in the letter, there's a, um, an address where if people just want to give a monetary donation, they can just mail a check to yep. the, you know, for the Kiwanis Club, but for the benefit of the school supply drive and mail it to um, Pauline Diorio. Diorio? Yeah, Diorio right, at Dior. the Winter Hill Bank. Yeah. <laughs> at the Winter Hill Great. Bank, yes. So this is all very great. Now, in terms of other ways that people, like you mentioned, the the weekly meetings, um, is there any more information that you want to give on on that type of support in addition to supporting the the supply drive? Well, uh, <coughs> Erica, we're always welcome to have people inquire about the club. We're always looking for additional membership because, just like Kaylee, who's a recent member of the club, you can add a lot of vibrancy to the club. Uh, uh, it was back in the early 80s where women joined the Qantas clubs from around the, the country and have just provided so much more vitality to the, uh, the club. We have a really wonderful group of, uh, of men and women who belong to the Selma Qantas Club. I'm coming up on 25 years and that I can look back fondly as a past president on initiatives much like this that uh, people come up with. We have some standard yearly events, but from time to time, just like Haley did here, she came up with this idea. The club was very willing to support that. Our current president, Bill Lemos, was all in. A bunch of us just jumped in when it's time to get the word out. Well, I had a large email list. Let's send it out, get it out, and we'll do another reminder to people because we're going to be down uh, standing outside of Staples down at Assembly Square uh, in a couple of weeks uh, with big donation bins and asking people to help out with club members. So it's a great way. So people want to be in touch with us about getting involved, uh, not just for this, but to become a member of Qantas. It's a fun organization, a lot of good things going on, and we support a lot of community initiatives, so we're very happy to have people. All they have to do is be interested, and we'll help them from there. That's fantastic. Right. And are there, is there a contact number or email address that you want to put out there? I don't know if you want to put Some out your personal. org. <laughs> we'll uh, everybody can go to that website. That's probably the easiest thing to okay. do because we have membership information, have little tabs to click on, and we have a schedule of events going on. I say typically Thursdays at 12.15, once a month we'll have a night meeting for those people who just can't get away at noontime. So it, it, it's, we try and make everything convenient for people and just a lot of fun. The meetings start at 12.15 and we will end, we'll end in mid-sentence at 1.30, but we're very good about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Prompt. <laughs> and, and our lunches are very nostalgic at the Mount Vernon. It's, um, you know, just a, it's a lot of camaraderie, as Jack said. And so I've been a member for only three years versus his 25. But I've just found that it's a really, um, it's a great way to really meet some, what I consider to be like the fabric of Somerville. You know, some really wonderful, longstanding people in the community who just, like to get together once a week. You know, we have fun, but we also do these uh, service projects together. And it's 
um, it's just been a really nice way to get to meet a lot of people who have been longtime Somerville residents or whether it's invested in business or just right. you know have lived here all their lives it's been yeah. a really great way to meet people in town that's good so. Somerville has a lot of those wonderfully deeply rooted organizations I think ours being one of them right yeah. been around for almost we're approaching 40 years very soon um, but I know the Somerville Kiwanis Club has um, you know supported Somerville Media Center over the years as well and there's been partnerships, and I look forward to more collaborations, yes, hopefully, that would in the future as well. That would be We're excellent. looking forward to it. Maybe we'll come back with another project in the, <laughs> in the future to uh, discuss. But it's a, it, it's a two-way street, obviously, Erica, that it's a, a benefit to the community to have um, uh, SCAT, now the Summer Media Center, and to have the Qantas Club. So if we can help each other out, we're doing everybody a favor. I love it. Well, thank you all for, for joining us on this very informative uh, segment here of Community Lens. And for those out there um, watching, uh, thank you for, for um, tuning in. And please help the Summerville Kiwanis Club, as they mentioned, many different ways from being involved in the group to donating supplies to um, helping support them um, in a monetary capacity. So on that note, thank you, Somerville, and we will see you soon. And thank you both yeah. for joining.